How big do you think a big cluster is in Proxmox? 64 cores, 128. Today, we're gonna to be pushing a number that is insane. So drop your guess below at what this all is going to be networked together as, as far as size of core count and RAM, it is going to be big. And one of the reasons I can do this is because it's actually so cold outside that we augment our heating with the home lab. And so right now is a time where having everything on doesn't actually make a huge impact because that heat just gets transferred into the house and that saves us a little bit of running the furnace. So I needed to make a lot of changes to each one of these individual systems because they're running and consuming and have parked a bunch of storage on them that needs to actually be inside the mega shared storage server. So I'm optimizing for an all flash network that will be powered by that 100 gigabit switch. You saw that video that I just put out, right? On the 100 gigabitification of the network. So we're gonna be making use of this as efficiently as possible. Going to an all flash, true NAS is going to provide us a lot of performance but that means there's gonna be changes that are gonna be quite wide to a lot of these systems. So today is basically the best time for me to demonstrate how big we can get a Proxmox cluster. All right, let's spin it up. So Spaceport is the name of the cluster that we've got currently. It'll also, I'm sure, be the name of the new cluster when I get around to creating that, and you can be sure that'll be a video on this channel. It has about 35 tibby bytes right now of storage space. All of that is flash. That's one of the reasons I need to redistribute some of that into the all flash server. Also, so much of it's not getting utilized because I kind of over provision those machines for what they're able to run. So reclaiming some of that is going to be a good thing to do. The memory that the cluster is at right now is 382 Gibby bytes totally, and that is 156 CPUs. Let's start with Prox1. It is the primary biggest machine on here. It is the quad GPU rig. If you did not check out the quad 3090 build, make sure to do that at some point. That is a fun video. And so 128 CPUs, of course it actually is 64, 128, but Proxmox counts it this way. So I'm not gonna argue with Proxmox on that. And we also have 256 gigabytes of RAM on this particular machine. This is one of the machines that definitely is the core of where the compute power is right now. Next, Prox 2 through 5. These are tiny machines. These are like the opposite side. They are tiny Zima boards. These are also 4 gigabyte, and I can only tell you 4 gigabytes with Proxmox just is not great if you're trying to run ZFS, and especially if you're trying to run things like Proxmox cluster file system, which is ZFS based, you're going to run into a lot of problems that the RAM is utilized by your essentially storage and then you're going to be running out of RAM and the four gigabytes is not a lot of RAM. So even trimming down the amount of reserve, it still is ridiculously small. Usually about one and a half Gibby bytes is parked just for ZFS and related file system things. That is a lot. And that also means every time I launch maybe more than a couple containers or VMs, it gets an out of memory kill on one of them if there's any sort of a spike. Or I have to set the amount of available RAM for that machine to be like 768 megabytes. That doesn't really get a lot of machines up and running. So that kind of has limited things quite a bit. So I'm going to be redoing all of the Zima boards. They are going to be still a core component because they are incredibly low wattage. So without anything, they idle around five watts. And if you add in quite a bit of stuff, including GPUs, they idle around nine watts, which is very, very nice, very reasonable. And it gives you a lot of devices that are core eight. This also kind of formed the original background cluster that I used to power my always on never down PFSense box. And the never, never down PFSense, uh, OpenSense box, I'm sorry, is really cool because that is, you, you knock it down on one, it replicates on another. These are not super fast. If you take a look at the processor speed, these are of course quad core and they got four gigs of RAM, just not a lot. 1.1 is their base. I mean, into the twos really doesn't get you too far either. And when I introduced Proc 6 and 7 into the cluster, that's when I saw a change because I added them to the OIS up high availability network because I just had extra ports still on the switch. I've got eight WAN side ports that can float around and that gives me eight machines of compatible connectivity also, which freaking cool. I love that. But 
when I saw the speed impact of a 4.2, 4.4 gigahertz uh, CPU on the just overall uh, OpenSense VM, I was like, oh, I got to do that. I mean, latency go down just makes for a better experience. Latency is really something you want to optimize for. So definitely, I now have a different opinion about where I primarily want those uh, that VM to live, and that is on Proc 6 and Proc 7. Both Proc 6 and Proc 7 are old Dell machines, but they're also super cost effective. I put together videos on each one of those when I was putting them together. Proc 6 is going to be removed and transitioned back in its removal process, I'm going to be doing a TrueNAS for Beginners Guide, so that'll be coming up very, very shortly. And then that'll you know, be followed up when it comes back into the cluster, but it's also going to have a secondary role, which is a Proxmox backup server. So having that as a Proxmox backup server will also be able to run as a Proxmox host at the same time, that you can do those two on the same machine without any issues. But definitely that'll be connected to my tape library and that'll be powering quite a bit of things right there itself. It is a very capable little system. Proc 7 is a Dell, I think this one is a 7050, uh, and it's got an i7-7700. And this one, pretty performant, but man, I've got a lot of, I've got so much flash parked up in this. I've got so much flash parked up in all of these and it really just needs to be fed from the 100 gigabit network. Most of these are gonna be served much better like that. So we're gonna be using iSCSI and ZFS with ZVols. So there'll be a lot that comes out in that video. And that basically means that getting rid of Prox1 in the future is something that'll happen. And that's why I thought today is the perfect time, possibly one of the last times I'll be able to actually make a mega cluster with all the machines because if one of them's down, it might make a pretty big impact, especially with the 128 cores and 256 gigabytes of RAM that we see on those final numbers. Let's power up some R930s. All right, let's get these turned on. Having a good UPS is a good idea if you're going to be running any sort of high performance servers with high electric demand. Each one of these can really, really put a lot of kilowatts on your meter. Now, if we take a look at the Sentry CDU, this is a switched metered PDU. It's keeping track of inflows of currents. It also has uh, attachable uh, temperature and humidity sensors that I've got two on each one of the PDUs. So we've got a front and a back, and you can see the temperature difference here between the front and the back. The 25.5C, the A2 sensor is in the front, and the A1 sensor is in the rear, and that's at 29.5C. This humidity is, whoo, it goes down a lot. Electric heat does that, and that's one thing that Man, I need some chapstick is about all I can say. The amount of amps that we're currently consuming, you can see here also in our summary, and you can see it's been up for 266 days. It's a pretty good uh, uptime. These are connected directly into, of course, the UPS that we've got, and they do really cool things like I can power up and power down remote individual switches, which is very nice to have as well. So here's Prox3 Spaceport. And we just fired up Prox 8 through Prox 11 over here. Each one of these has 8890 CPUs in them. They're old, but they are very, very performant still. So the E7-8890, this is definitely also me telling you don't go run out and buy R930s unless you need a freakish amount of RAM. If you need a freakish amount of RAM, go out and buy R930s. You can fit up to 12 terabytes in one of them. And so we've got our information and we're gonna be joining Prox 8 through Prox 11. Now, each one of them does not have that much RAM, although all of them do have the 8890 V4 processors. So let's go ahead and join them in over here. And we should see these numbers climb up here as I join each of these to the cluster. This is exciting. Eight's joining. Nine's joining, 10 is joining. This is the biggest cluster I've ever made. 
And also, I would not be doing this because you can't just uh, create giant clusters and remove things very easy and very efficiently. Uh, if I would not be doing this if I were intending on keeping any of these machines operating systems installed. This entire cluster, like I mentioned, will be taken down and rebuilt later. And that, of course, I mentioned there will for sure be a video around that. Okay, and we've got our final one joining up over here. And that should give us quite a bit, almost two terabytes of RAM, 732 CPUs. Ooh. That is a lot of CPUs. All right, so now we're at 924 CPUs, 1.75 tibibytes of RAM, and about 41 tibibytes of system storage. We got one more machine to fire up. Let's get that quad 3090 GPU rig powered on. And the quad 3090 build, like I mentioned, awesome video. Take a chance, go check that one out. Pretty cool build. And we've got our final Proxmox host that'll be joining in. Another 128 CPUs and 256 gigs of RAM. So far, everything has worked out really cool. And as something that's just been for the lols, this has actually been pretty entertaining and fun. And for sure, this is the biggest Proxmox cluster that I've ever built. Tell me in the comments below of the biggest ones that you guys have ever built. I look forward to reading about that. There it is. And we've got our latest one in. Let's check out the summary here. All right. So we are now at two terabytes of RAM and 1,052 CPUs. 1,000 CPUs? Whoa, this is crazy. And Proxmox didn't even blink, which is really cool. I mean, I expected actually something to break. Nothing broke here and everything is working really good. This use case that I have for these is typically running Unreal Engine 5 light mass calculations on CPUs. We've got a new DLSS coming from NVIDIA. GPU light mass has been catching up. There are some bugs with it, but it could be about time for that to supplant where we're at. And it might look really, really good also. And it could be dramatically lower wattage to get to the end result as well. So let me know down below what other kind of use cases you could have for something like an R930. Now, when I got these, it was a road trip and definitely they were using them for high counts of virtual machines. So definitely if you wanted to run tons of virtual machines and if you needed like 12 terabytes of RAM, well, these systems are not that bad. They're about $500 to $600 kind of bare bones-ish at the moment. The CPUs are actually really cheap. DDR4 and the speeds that it can run are actually pretty affordable also. So these run up to the V4 line of Xeons and they are definitely something you would not want to have sitting in the room beside you. This is not put it under your bed kind of server. This is put it somewhere that is definitely far away from you and or has a lot of noise and closing. We definitely in this house have gone through massive, massive amounts of work to do just that. And you can find all that kind of information in the history below. Most people nowadays are gonna be looking at things like Epics or Threadripper Pros. Threadripper Pros like the 7995WX that I got right here, that build is in the history and also cool things like the quad GPU rig, which is running an older Rome, but really economical and still super kick butt uh, system. Now, those are probably way, way high and also about 1500 for just kind of the CPU and motherboard at a top in spec in a Rome still. More expensive than this, but at the same time, you're gonna get PCIe 4 versus PCIe 3. Another bummer about the R930s. They don't have built-in power for GPUs. That kind of sucks. I really wish they did. If they did, that could change quite a lot of things. But without it, it really does make it very hard to imagine putting anything aside from maybe like a P2000 in them. I'm not even sure what the bus power is on them. I'm imagining they've got a 35 watt or a 25 watt bus limit, which is a ridiculous, but they do support four, four, 1100 watt PSUs so they can really crank out the juice. Now, right now running in the idle state, all of this stuff and those four are right about 1750 watts. Not that bad. Of course, I'm reusing that to keep my cat warm here. Yeah, she looks like she's gonna be getting a lot warmer and I use these fans to force the air in. But this is just an insane 
insane amount of size for a Proxmox cluster. This is a mega cluster, a super cluster, a cluster bleep. You tell me what you think about this in the comments below. I look forward to reading what you have to say. And certainly this went really well. I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. I don't even want to tear it apart now, but I'm going to be tearing it apart really soon so we can set up the new TrueNAS all flash, basically head end that everything is going to be built around. The Proxmox machines will be accessing that and it'll be iSCSI based for most of the access that's happening there. It's going to be wicked fast. You're going to want to watch that. Before we get there, of course, like I mentioned, we're going to have a TrueNAS beginner's guide that's going to be way easier. It's going to cover everything in a lot of detail. And of course, redoing the storage server head in node is going to be a much, much bigger, kind of more advanced guide. So definitely not for beginners on that one. Everybody have a great rest of your day. I really do uh, thank you guys for all the views that I've gotten recently. It really means a lot to me. So thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. It does, uh, it does inspire me a lot to create more. Everybody have a great one. I will see you next time.